Yeah. Yeah. My phone is for four o'clock, even though that's a little. Is it okay if you use the digital time? Sure. Okay. Then we'll start. Okay. Um, welcome back um, from the coffee break. Uh, we have two talks uh, right now uh, for the for the last session this afternoon. And the first one um, is by Eldad Bettelheim from the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, and he's going to speak about the Widom approach to the C to tens to zero limit of the Lieb-Linegar model and generalized hydrodynamics. Okay, uh, thanks, and thanks the organizers. Um, yeah, so we heard a lot about uh, generalized hydrodynamics and about Widom, and uh, I'll try to uh, like uh, give a, uh, uh, an explanation how to think about the relation between them. I don't think I, I will give so many uh, details, but uh, yeah, just how to think about the relation between the two. So, and I'll kind of uh, uh, start by an introduction, even though uh, probably uh, it's not very uh, necessary, but uh, maybe it, it will help to understand the, the motivation. Okay, so kind of a obvious introduction. So. Uh, well, classical integrable system, as we all know, they're uh, solvable, but it doesn't mean that we know the initial value problem. What we have is uh, access to a whole set of uh, good solutions, sol solitons, periodic solutions, etc. If we want to uh, solve the initial value problem, one of the most efficient ways we all know is the Witham equation, uh, Witham approach, right? And uh, which is only approximate, right? And now the question is uh, what happens in the quantum case, right? So uh, one way to arrive at uh, generalized hydrodynamics is to think along these lines again and say, okay, in a quantum case, we have uh, the same uh, type of situation, an integrable system, an infinite number of conserved quantities, but it uh, doesn't mean we know how to solve an initial value problem, right? So what should we do? Uh, again, just as we did in the classical case, we may think, uh, okay, we may think that we may have to go to a approximate uh, solution, which makes use indeed of the uh, availability of this infinite number of concert quantities, but in uh, in some uh, thinking more about them being conserved locally, right? Average conserved quantities just in the Witham equations and what happens to them, right? So in the Witham equations, of course, uh, uh, what we have is uh, one of the most uh, striking uh, uh, strengths of this, uh, this approach is this, to solve this uh, problem of uh, wave breaking, right? This, uh, the gradient catastrophe. If we don't uh, pay attention to the dispersion, then of course the waves tend to break. We have infinite derivatives and we have to take account of the uh, dispersion. And this brings about these oscillatory regions. These oscillatory regions are, the, are described by those solutions which we have good, uh, good control over. Uh, so what we say is that we uh, separate the system into small boxes. Each box uh, has a good solution, a periodic solution, kind of a kind of a steady state solution, and we want to know how. Uh, <clears throat> and the approach, the Witham approach, says just to keep account of how the uh, concert quantities flow around in the system, and you can uh, find out the evolution of the envelope of these uh, oscillatory, oscillatory solutions. Right, uh, uh, but how to do that more formally? So uh, let's choose uh, one. Uh, there are many names associated with the, uh, and I've uh, left out uh, quite a few, I'm sure. Um, yeah, and we should apologize that I, the references will not be complete throughout the talk, and uh, not at all. And then, uh, yeah, so let's choose one of the uh, formalisms to solve the. the uh, to uh, look rigorously at the Witham equations. And uh, one of the most uh, 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 nicer formalisms is to think about uh, generating functions, generating differentials. So uh, we take the conserved uh, densities, rho i, stick them into a, a generating function, which will include all of them. And uh, okay, uh, put a dz on the, on the end, so we call it a differential. And the same with the currents. And uh, the, of course, the conservation equations are now uh, 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 summarizing one uh, simpler equation, one uh, simple equation, which uh, is supposed to help us solve the problem, also in the average sense. And uh, the question is, how does it help us? And as uh, we heard a few talks before, 
what happens is if we look at one of these uh, small areas, which has a periodic solution, then what happens is that these uh, differentials become a meromorphic differential or the Riemann surface. It just means that they are functions of this uh, algebraic functions of, uh, of the parameter Z, this uh, generating function parameter, this dummy parameter, which becomes a spectral parameter, and the rational functions of this uh, Z and other uh, simpler functions, right? Of this radical and simple functions. So just algebraic functions, including also this radical. This is what it means to be a, a meromorphic differential on the Riemann surface. And there's some, uh, this, this function, this, per, this differential has some behavior at infinity, this another, and this uh, completely uh, defines this meromorphic uh, differentials on the Riemann surface. And uh, these uh, parameter lambda i, which are the branch cuts on the Riemann surface, it's an algebraic Riemann surface, namely it's uh, characterized by branch cuts. The branch points are the moduli of the solution. So they describe the, uh, the oscillations in case there are enough of them, there are oscillations. And the moduli of the oscillation, namely the amplitude, the, uh, the frequency, the wave number, uh, all of them are summarized within these uh, branch points. And uh, what happens is that the, rem the rhythm equations will be equations for the motions of these branch uh, points, right? So for a steady state solution, a real solution of the, not an approximate solution, a real solution, periodic solution of the uh, integral system, these are fixed and meromorphic differentials are indeed uh, uniquely defined. And this equation just uh, uh, trivial, uh, but now we let them uh, move. And uh, okay, so if we have such a solution, which has a, a, um, oscillatory features in some region, then each region has different types of oscillations. So we have different branch cuts. These are the branch cuts. The branch points move from region to region and also in time. And uh, this is, uh, I think this should be here and that should be there. But uh, once we go back to uh, just one moduli, just describes the, uh, the, the height of this smooth function again. Okay, so this rhythm, right? And uh, the modulation equations, what we can still uh, formally uh, uh, look, uh, get from this rhythm equation is the, uh, the formal, uh, uh, some formal uh, information we get from here is that this equation turns out to be a, such, a, uh, such an equation which has this Riemann uh, invariant form which uh, means that these lambda i's, the branch points, move to a velocity which is equal to the ratio between the first differential and the second differential we've just defined. So this is by now, we've seen this in many talks, right? So, uh, but this is a kind of an introduction to that. So uh, the next uh, thing uh, I'd like to do is uh, uh, go to the quantum case and uh, compare it to that. And uh, yeah, so integrable systems, now we look at quantum integrable systems. So this means that we promote all the uh, fields into operators. And in, in particular, the, uh, the, the conserved densities and uh, currents become uh, operators. In, uh, in particular, one can look, for example, at the lieb leeninger model, which uh, is a Bose gas interacting through a delta function potential, which is the second quantization of which is this, this Hamiltonian. This is one of the conserved densities out of an infinite number of them, which means that, and the fact that it's integral means that we can uh, uh, simultaneously uh, diagonalize uh, all these conserved uh, uh, quantities, right? So an infinite number of operators can be uh, diagonalized uh, together uh, to produce an eigenstate. These are the, uh, the analogs of the oscillatory solutions, et cetera, for which we, we know how to solve in the classical case. But in the quantum case, uh, we have eigenstates. Okay, and uh, what does uh, generalized hydrodynamics uh, want to uh, teach us? So again, we want to solve the initial value problem, some state which is not an eigenstate, not a steady state, not a, a stationary state. And uh, to do that, we assume that the, uh, the wave function uh, that we're dealing with is uh, locally looks like an eigenstate just in the rhythm theory. So we think that uh, we have diagonalized one of these conserved quantities 
approximately, this is not an equality sign. This is approximately two in some sense. Okay. And they won't be too rigorous about that. And then of course, there are also currents in this case. And to uh, predict how these the rows change from time to time or from point to point, what we do is use the normal equation for these average quantities. Just as in the rhythm case, we had average quantities for the density and current. Okay, so um, yeah, so uh, how to do it practically? So practically in the uh, rhythm case, what we had is uh, these uh, differentials showing up and we want to uh, compare that with the quantum case. So we have to come up with some formalism. Yeah. Yes, it's both, I would say it's both a quantum average and uh, also in some box, right? So it's both, it's both this kind of averaging just over a box and, uh, right? and this is more uh, ideological, right? It's not uh, the actual procedure, but in, in principle, that's what we're trying to do. Right? Okay, so uh, just in the rhythm case, we had like, the ideology and the formulas, and now we have to go to the formalism of quantum integrable systems, right? So in quantum integrable systems, we have these uh, rapidities, right? So basically, uh, one can think about particles moving around in the quantum system. The particles uh, of the quantum system may be, for example, quantized solitons. We can take the solitons of the classical system, quantize them, think about quantization of solitons, each soliton has a rapidity or a momenta. I will not really uh, distinguish between them, although there's a nonlinear transformation between momenta and rapidity, but I'll uh, kind of not go into that detail. So we have all these uh, rapidities, momenta, whatever, and we have to choose them according to the beta uh, equations, okay? Which means uh, the, which mean the following, right? So it turns out that we can, uh, there are many opportunities to choose these momenta on the real axis. These are, these are the black and white dots. And we choose actually to occupy certain momenta and others we leave behind. So there's a density of states on the real axis, which we, we can take advantage of in order to occupy momenta. And there's a density of quasi-particle momenta, which is uh, these black dots. So the density of states is sigma s, the density of uh, uh, quasi-particles is sigma. And uh, it turns uh, this is an interacting system, which means that the density of states is uh, determined by the density of particles, which means there's an equation between them, uh, connecting them, and this is the uh, beta equations, right? So these are the beta equations. We also have seen that in the classical uh, case, they, they somehow correspond to trying to move one solid through all the others or something like that. In the quantum case, uh, they also have a similar kind of uh, interpretation. Uh, but uh, in principle, what they relate is the density of states with the density of quasi-particles, right? And uh, the density of states, uh, the uh, density of quasi-particles is almost arbitrary. Of course, it cannot exceed the density of states. There can be no bl more black dots than the overall number of dots, which means that if we uh, define an occupation number, which is a density over the density of states, this is uh, something arbitrary between zero and one. And we can write this equation, the beta equations, as an equation for n times sigma s, which is sigma, as how does it uh, transform, uh, depend, uh, give us, uh, give right to s. Okay, now that we have this uh, density of uh, this occupation number, which describes where the block dots are, then we can try to ask ourselves, uh, we think of the following, we think this is uh, the description of the system locally, and we want to know how this uh, density of black, uh, black dots uh, changes as a function of space and time if we want to preserve this equation, just in the widow case. So this is a local description now, and this has to uh, evolve both in space and time, right? And which means that this n has to evolve, we have to find an equation for these n's, right? And uh, in order to do that, we have to think about this uh, uh, conservation equation. And uh, yeah, so the concert, uh, the concert quantities is really the link between the classical and the quantum case. So for this uh, quantum case, I have a set of conserved quantities, conserved density. This is how they are computed from the density of states, uh, density of particles, sigma, just moments of this distribution. 
And uh, for the classical system, I have a set of conserved quantities and I can associate to each quantum state, a classical state, which has the same conserved quantities. This is what is natural to do. And uh, in certain situation, if we're in a semi-classical situation where the quantum system is well described by the classical system, then uh, this uh, description of the quantum state through the classical state should be a good one, right? So this, if we write equations for these, for the motion of these, uh, for the evolution of the quantum state through general, generalized hydrodynamics, it should be, uh, it should reproduce the classical equation when we're in a semi-classical situation. And the semi-classical situation appears, for example, when I take this, uh, this quantum system and take C to be very small. So this is the region where I should expect a convergence between the generalized hydrodynamics and classical wave of theory. And this should follow from uh, this uh, uh, formalism. In particular, if I write the densities and the currents and write the equations for their conservation, then uh, I should get generalized hydrodynamics on the one hand, but in the limit, I should get with them. And I'm just explaining how this happens. Yeah, uh, without too many details, actually. Okay, so uh, again, so we have this beta ansatz equation, and this will be useful in, uh, in writing how this n evolves, right? And uh, we can think about this beta ansatz equation as a, as a particular case of a more general, what's called dressing equation, where the dressing equation is basically replacing this one by z to the k, and now calling the solution omega k. Omega naught will be sigma s, right? And uh, the conserved quantities and the conserved uh, currents can be written through this omega. So this is uh, similar uh, to the Witham case in the sense that the now the velocity, if you write down the equation of the conserved quantities and demand the conserved quantities, uh, conservation of, of all these quantities, then it turns out that this n will uh, move with the velocity, which is equal to, uh, to the ratio between omega one and omega zero. So we see the parallels between the Witham uh, the evolution, which had uh, the spectrum or the branch cuts moving according to such an equation and the uh, qu quantum case where we have a similar looking equation and uh, that should reproduce the Witham equations in, the, in a similar case. And it's suggestive now that omega one is somehow related to the uh, omega one and omega zero re uh, uh, related to the omega x and omega t that we've defined in the uh, in the classical case. Okay, so let's uh, look uh, more closely uh, at the uh, cl semi-classical limit, how uh, this uh, comes about. All right, so uh, let's look at the uh, relation between the two. So, uh, well, so in the classical case, with, which is a C goes to zero limit of the quantum case, we have uh, our conserved quantities as well. In the classical case, we defined uh, uh, conserve uh, meromorphic what turned out to be meromorphic differentials by uh, writing generating differentials on the uh, uh, using these uh, conserved currents and there's also omega t which uh, I haven't written here but it's just replacing rho by j in the quantum case we have uh, omegas defined by this equation where we have to choose some n for each n we get some omega k in the same sense that here for each uh, uh, classical solution, we get a different uh, omega x and omega t, right? And now the question is, of course, which n should I choose in order to reproduce a meromorphic differential on the Riemann surface, right? Yes, yeah, so let me say it then. Yeah, so n, uh, okay. So this n, in order for us to get this uh, omega k to be in the limit c goes to zero, uh, one of these monomorphic differentials, then we have to choose n, which is the indicating function on the branch cuts. Turns out that this is, this is what happens. So if I choose n to be the indicating function on the branch cuts of the classical system, then it turns out that the solution for this equation is indeed a monomorphic differential, right? This is the, 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 the connection. 
And uh, indeed, uh, and then the velocity is the ratio. Uh, here it's gen generically the, the ratio. Here it's generically the ratio. But for this choice, we have a, a basically inequality between the two in the C goes to zero limit. And this is uh, can be shown formally uh, in the following way. So uh, we have this, um, just to understand uh, what is the step that connects the two. So in the, uh, in the, we have this, uh, this uh, dressing equation for some n. We choose n to be one of these, uh, uh, to be the characteristic uh, function of the branch uh, cuts. And we choose, uh, uh, and we choose k, we will choose to be equal to zero, one, but in, in general, we can choose any k, which will describe the evolution according to any one of the times. And then what one can see is that what this equation uh, does for uh, c goes to zero, we have a delta function. So if we take a, a point uh, to be in the support of the, uh, of the spectrum on the branch cuts, then what we see is that is this produces omega k and this produces omega k, they fall off. And what we, the next order, uh, next uh, to leading order in C, Okay, the leading order in C of this thing is a delta function when C goes to zero. The next two leading order gives us a, a deriv derivative Hilbert transform. You get the uh, derivative of this function on the branch uh, cut. Hilbert transform meaning that <clears throat> we take it on the, the value of it on the upper half plane minus the value of it on the lower half plane. And uh, this equation demands that the Hilbert transform derivative of omega is equal to z to the k, right? It's a function whose uh, jump discontinuity over the real axis is equal to z to the k. And this is, uh, if one thinks about it for a while, one sees that this is just a, a morphic differential, which uh, uh, one can write this, uh, one can write this omega k using this uh, radical, And one sees that if uh, one multiplies it by dz, it becomes a meromorphic differential, right? So it's just solving an equation which demands something about the jump of some function on, the, on, on, some, uh, on some intervals. And this turns out to have a solution in terms of uh, meromorphic differentials, right? So this completes kind of the analogy. We see that for a certain uh, uh, n, we get that the uh, classical limit of the uh, of generalized hydrodynamics is uh, is indeed with them. Okay, so uh, yeah, so let me conclude. Um, okay, so uh, so what does this help us? So this is was just like the uh, um, uh, uh, an introduction of, of the uh, ideas behind the relation between the two, and this 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 relation can be used in order to compute uh, objects uh, in classical uh, uh, quantum averages, for example, using a, a classical means, right? So the, the, the connection between the quantum case to the classical case using these uh, ideas about the relation to the uh, to the Riemann surface, et cetera, allows us to compute, for example, uh, quantum averages using the uh, classical analog as some integrals over the Riemann surface. It turns out, for example, that uh, using the work of uh, Lashkov, Forrest, et cetera, uh, one can uh, write down a classical, uh, a classical observable using an integral over the Riemann surface. So this is useful in, re in order to uh, have a better understanding of uh, the behavior of uh, uh, quantum observables in this uh, limit. Okay, so I think I'll stop here. Thanks. Okay, questions. Thank you very much for the talk. I mean, I just have a very simple question. Uh, I mean, if you take uh, in the delta Bose gas, if you take C to zero, I mean, then you have free bosons. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I was missing in your presentation, uh, sorry, I mean, you, you know, when you let C go to zero, there must be other parameters which are sort of moving around. And then you yeah, just yeah. didn't tell us, I mean, so. Yeah, yeah, so you take C to zero and the amplitude goes to infinity. It's not, uh, it's formally C to zero. The idea is to take, uh, 
basically the idea is to uh, take uh, um, yeah to take psi to infinity right the, uh, this is a boson so you take a very uh, large value of the amplitude of the boson it becomes a classical system but this formally since you can absorb classically c into psi this is formally like taking c it's not really okay it's uh, it's hard to, to yeah, so it becomes it's become the nonlinear Schrodinger I should have mentioned there. Yeah, I guess in, in this respect, the n that you choose is a zero entropy state, right? So it's zero or one. This this uh, yes, this is the one I choose this. So uh, this is c to zero, but from a zero entropy state, which is quite non-trivial. That's why you get something that is not just. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the state is of course uh, uh, very special. Yes. So did case. you get a? Is this correspondence then with the condensate? Is that what the correspondence is? Okay, the correspondence is uh, the. Uh, what you can do is you can uh, take basically any n because you can just uh, think about averaging, right? So you can take one zero one zero one zero and uh, yes, same similar to what they're doing classically. Stand, yes. Uh, taking uh, soliton gas by taking many small gaps, one, then you can do that also quantum mechanically. You can think about one zero one zero one zero, etc. Right? Yeah, correct. You can you yeah. can do that. You can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's related to the first question, I guess. Um, I mean, when you take C tending to zero and the amplitude uh, large enough, so you get to the classical field, so you can still end up in a regime where you get what we call wave turbulence, mm -hmm. which has no solitons really, it's just uh, weakly interacting waves. I'm just wondering, I mean, the limit that you're taking, does it allow you to go beyond that? Or are yeah. you really essentially going into the wave turbulence regime again? No, no, this uh, this limit allows you to go to the full nonlinear Schrodinger. Well, uh, full nonlinear Schrodinger, um, you, I mean, but not a, a certain regime of so, to any nonlinear Schrodinger. Yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, the weak wave turbulence really arises when you have large kinetic energy compared to weak potential energy. So, are you going to a regime where you have the potential energy is also large compared to the kinetic? Both energy? are can be. A, of the same Eddie, order yeah, or one okay. bigger than the other. Okay, so it's more general. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's quite general. You can get to any semi classical state as far as I understand from this limit. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you, in this limit, you obtain Widom equations for the death focusing. Yes. No linear sharing equation. Uh, can you speculate, or maybe you just know? How we can obtain well, rhythm equations could be derived for the focusing. So, what what quantum model would correspond to the focusing of your Schrodinger equation? Yeah, it's uh, it's more about uh, I didn't really uh, think about that, but uh, it's about more controlling the solution, etc. And uh, this kind of question, I mean, formally, it's uh, you don't see a big difference, but of well, course, difference uh, is, is huge because because for the focusing of the spectrum is complex. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not on the line it's a complex plane it's a kind of diff totally different story yeah yes but i mean the formalism with them is the same and uh, yes but yeah the question but, is what my question do... was, yes i understand the, about the formalism of the widow is there any quantum well many body system that that gives us a uh, focusing surely it's the same mm. the principle is the same but the basic and Yes, it's uh, uh, as I didn't touch it, so I don't know where these uh, where these subtleties uh, come into play. That's what I'm saying. Uh, in principle, uh, there's not. The fact that it's complex is not uh, doesn't sound to be like a, a big uh, a big problem in general. But uh, one should look at the where there are some subtleties, of course, like for example completeness, etc., which I didn't I didn't think about. Yeah. 
Okay, well, uh, let's thank Eldad again for his presentation.